And welcome back to this matter of the conscience. The old evil conscience compared to the renewed new conscience. Christ is given to the Holy Spirit. Now you're going to think that this is strange that this matter of temptation has anything to do with conscience. To the tail end of this piece, you'll hear what I'm talking about. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempt he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath, lust hath uh, conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 16. Now, let's see if you can follow this. If the devil faces something in front of you to tempt you, his motive behind this act is to destroy you. It's absolute. And he'll use guilt to keep you from God. That would save you from this. Not only temptation, but the guilt. If God allows this to occur, now you gotta understand this part. If God allows this to occur, because the devil has no power to do this unless the Lord allows it. You have a free will. Understand that? So if God allows this to occur because the devil has no power to do this unless the Lord gives him power. Remember what he said to Paul. Don't you know I have power to crucify it as you go? Jesus says it. You have no power unless it comes from above. So if God allows this to occur because the devil has no power to do this unless the Lord allows it. He is allowing it to reveal to you your fallen nature and his inability to save yourself. Seeing your helpless condition and admitting this, God's solution to your condition might be considered by you. Apart from these actions of deliberate intent to destroy and the other to reveal, you would not see your fallen condition. God has to get to see that. I mean, you got to see the problem to gain the solution. If you don't think you got a problem, like he said to the Pharisees, they didn't feel they needed a physician. <laughs> yes, they did. So they kept the law. They thought they didn't need no help. That's where the, the devil gets you either to break the law or he leads you to think that you're keeping it. And with the breaking of the law, he'll keep you in guilt and keep you from God. So what James was revealing to us is understood in a different light. It is not God that initiates the temptation, but only works it to his good rather than evil's desire to destroy you. And evil that is not around you, not only around you, now catch this part, but in you. Paul said, In me that is my fact there dwells no good thing. You have this fallen sin nature in you. You have to discover that to get the solution to it. The finished work of Christ before the foundation of the world comes out in all my other videos. I remember one guy said this way, he said, you know, the devil doesn't uh, tempt you. He just suggests in you of your own will, your own sin nature, follow the temptation. So he can say, well, I didn't tempt him. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, right. He initiated it. With this in mind, let me now give this same text with what I have shared intertwined. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. It's clearly evil that is doing the temptation. We know that. You may not want to admit it, but it's the evil doing that. Now even being present, he don't have to be present. He's done his dirty work in the garden. He placed in the sin nature of Adam and you inherit that. And if you go the way of Cain, you're never going to get rid of it. You can sit there and keep lying to yourself, or like Adam and Eve first, at first they did, so in fig leaves to hide that fact. God offers him the solution. What was the solution? The symbol, the representation of the eternal fact of Christ slain before the foundation world through the shed blood of innocent animals. The blood of the Lamb. Now, even being present, using your sin nature in you to accomplish this. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt thee any man. God is not the one initiating temptation. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. That's what the devil's going to say. 
I didn't tempt him. I just suggested. Yeah, but you put this nature in him to go independent from God. So when he's drawn away of his own lust and touch, drawn away by the fallen nature inherited from his fallen father, Adam. That nature in you is drawing you away. Then when lust hath conceived, now all manner of desires, so-called good and bad, don't think of lust as just evil. You can do good acting independent from God. It brings forth sin or acting independent from God. God allows this occur to bring forth the truth that in you, your sin nature is no good thing. And sin, this fallen nature in you, when it is finished, walk in the flesh, you reap death, you walk in the spirit, you reap life. This fallen nature in you, when it is finished, brings forth death. Death has always been the result from Adam up to this present moment. A result that clearly reveals that if you were born on this planet, that's a better way of putting it, if you were born on this planet, you have a problem. You came to the loins of Adam. If you don't discover that and go off and do what Cain did, you'll never discover it. If this wasn't so, there would be no death then on this planet. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Don't get this confused. You were born on this planet, and you do have a problem. Face it, my beloved. So, thank God that Jesus did overcome this world, the flesh and the devil, so much so that once this is seen, we need not focus on it as we once did. You know, keep trying to do good. You know? Though we are unfaithful, that's where your faith and trust comes in. You're trusting God. Though we are unfaithful, He remains faithful. His grace and mercy and unconditional love still stands in those moments of our through our fallen nature, succumb to our temptations. Thank God that you have not allowed your conscience to be seared. Yet in the sense, do not let it tie you up in guilt. That's one extreme to the other. How many times do you have to fall flat on your face to come to believe that in us, that is in our flesh, there dwells a good thing? We have seen this enough times, there will come a day that you will not focus so much on the problem but rather the solution. Get your eyes on the solution. No more consciousness of sin. Like I said, there's no more condemnation. You get in Christ. No more consciousness of sin. You become dead to its reality. How do we get there? As we were saying, how do we get there? Here's how you get there. I found it works for me. I hope it works for you. Scriptures, you know, I could give a list of scriptures, which will probably come out in my other videos or will probably come out in the this series here. Our focus must increasingly be more on where we came from, our spirits, why we are here, and where we are going. A songwriter wrote about it in this way. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face, and the things of this life will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And not going the other way of having our conscience seared as with a hard iron. You want to do that. Enable us to kill the conscience that God would use to draw you back to him. Whereas evil would kill it to get you to do its evil and feel no sense of right or wrong. He always pushes one extreme to the other. You got so much conscience, you're walking in constant guilt. Or he turns around and sears your conscience where you just twist the law make new laws so you don't feel self-condemned no more. So I hope you got something that has a lot to do with the matter of conscience. You see, the conscience of sin, no more conscience of sin, and have that conscience years with a hot iron. It goes along with the rest of these videos. God bless.